aliens take over the Earth. They then announce that they will be forcing the humans to work a tyrannical four hours a day, four days a week, in exchange for basic rights like housing, medical services, and food. Needless to say, they are very confused when the humans celebrate their new alien overlords. People of Earth, the alien began, its voice smooth yet powerful. We, the Zelfirians, now oversee your planet. From this day forth, the alien continued, each human will be subjected to the most strenuous of workloads, a brutal regimen of four hours a day, four days a week. In return, we shall provide housing, medical care, and sustenance free of charge. The world was silent, not quite believing what the aliens had just said. Then all of a sudden, the humans erupted in joy. People danced in the streets and cuddled their families. The aliens didn't know what to make of it. The usual reaction was one of crushing defeat, not euphoria. On the mothership, High Chancellor Urzak turned to his advisor. Have we miscalculated? Why are the Earthlings so jubilant? They must be mocking us, replied advisor Latar. Or perhaps it's some form of psychological defense mechanism? Commander Falin wasn't convinced. I've monitored their transmissions for years. This seems genuine. They decided to investigate further. Posing as humans, Zelfirian researchers went undercover, mingling with the populace to understand their unexpected elation. At a park in London, researcher Galix approached a man playing with his kids. Isn't it tragic, the alien takeover? The man laughed. Are you kidding? Before, I barely saw my kids because of my two jobs. Now I work only 16 hours a week and have time to be a father. It's fantastic. In New York, Zinnia talked with a waitress. How do you feel about our new life? The waitress grinned. I used to work 60-hour weeks on my feet the whole time. My back was killing me. Now, life's good. Similar sentiments echoed globally. The Zelfirians, masters of many galaxies, were renowned for their shrewd understanding of other species. Yet, with humans, they had misjudged spectacularly. Back on the mothership, Galix presented the findings. High Chancellor, humans were already working themselves to the brink. In their system, it's not uncommon for individuals to work multiple jobs, long hours, with barely any time for leisure or family. Our tyrannical demands gave them something they hadn't had in years, free time. Razak looked thoughtful. So our harshest punishment turned out to be their greatest gift. Back on Earth, families, which once used to get together only on special occasions, now had dinner together every night. Parents could be seen cheering for their children at school sports events. Libraries and museums, once visited mostly by tourists and students, now had locals lining up, eager to absorb knowledge and art. Entrepreneurs and innovators, free from the shackles of long work hours, birthed ideas that transformed industries. The arts flourished as people had the time to delve deep into their creative minds. Music, literature, and visual arts saw a renaissance that historians would later describe as the golden age of creativity. And so it was, in the annals of history, that the humans of Earth remembered not an invasion, but a gift. They worked merely four hours a day for four days a week, leaving them ample time to relish life's simple joys. Parks echoed with laughter, homes resonated with love, and hearts overflowed with gratitude. The streets, once filled with hurried steps, now had dancers and dreamers, all under the benevolent watch of their unexpected saviors, the Zelfirians.